Horizon Tribe SRC, we are excited to bring you the second episode of the Power of Human Connectivity. Welcome family, friends, and guests. We are excited to have you back with us again. Now, SRC encourages participation from our audience. Have something to say, want to ask a question, raise your hand, we will call on you. You can un unmute your mic and engage in the conversation. Now, what I'm about to say is very, very important. I want you to take a moment and send to your friends and family the link that you use to connect to this live broadcast because you already know it's going to be good. And I guarantee it. Now, in our previous episode, we began unpacking the Darwin theory and its impact on an individual's belief system. We also talked about the role that the heart and the mind play in our very complex human system. We also mentioned that as humans, we are wired for extraordinary abilities and that our design affords us unique ways of living and that our very existence is connected, according to Dr. Greg Braden in his book entitled Human by Design. Now today, we are going to dig deeper into our discussion of the power of human connectivity as we examine another one of Dr. Braden's books, The Divine Matrix. Now, let's kickstart our conversation by unpacking the concept of a hologram. Dr. Braden said this, and I quote, the holographic principle may be one of the simplest yet least understood phenomenon of nature. At the same time, it could hold the greatest potential for making the change on even the largest possible scale within a time frame that's dizzying to the mind. To apply this power in our personal lives, however, we must understand precisely what a hologram is and how it works. So first things first, just what is a hologram in simple terms and end quote in simple terms in a holographic every piece of the something every piece of the something mirrors the whole something now listen as i read an excerpt from the book the divine matrix scientists and this is what scientists did scientists split a single photon into two separate particles, creating twins with identical properties. Then using equipment developed for the experiment, they fired both particles away from one another in opposite directions. The twins were placed in, specially, in a specially designed chamber with two fiber optic pathways, just like the ones that transmit phone calls. They were extending away from the chamber in opposite directions for seven miles. The twins were given a target of 14 miles to travel. At the end of the pathways, the twins were forced to choose between two random routes that were identical in every respect. Scientists discovered that when the twins had to follow one course or the other, they both made precisely the same choices and traveled the same path each time without fail. The results were identical in every time, every time the experiment was conducted. Wisdom would suggest that for this kind of connection to happen, the photons had to be sending signals to one another. Now we're talking about the power of human connectivity, but in order to grasp this concept, we must uh, first understand, well, if we're gonna grasp this concept, we cannot dismiss or ignore physics. As physics would say that for a message to travel between the photons, photons, it would have to be moving faster than the speed of light. And we know 
that according to Einstein's theory of relativity, nothing can travel that quickly, right? Therefore, this is the question that we're gonna answer today, hopefully. Is it possible that these particles are violating the laws of physics or are they demonstrating something else to us? And what could that something else be? But before we turn this over and ask our panels this question, ask our masterminds this question, let's let the, Mark Thomas, if you would, define what a photon is. Mark Thomas. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, photon, let's not, we're not gonna get too deep in the weeds on that. So uh, we'll try to keep it as basic as possible, but uh, you know, just a quick search. Uh, in fact, I did that this, uh, this morning was, uh, I just checked with Wikipedia on what a photon is. So it's very interesting. A uh, photon is an elementary particle, which means that it's basic. It can't be separated any further than it, than it is, as far as we currently know they can't anyway. So they call it the quantum or the smallest quantity of the electromagnetic field. Um, and that includes, so photons aren't just light. Photons are radiation, radio waves, and uh, they're a force carrier. In other words, they carry energy. So a photon is a, is a little packet of energy in effect. If, if you want to uh, think of it, you can think of it uh, as when you go outside in the sunlight, you feel the heat from the sun. Well, a photon has carried that heat from the sun to you. And they always move at the speed of light. In fact, by their very nature, they're always moving at the speed of light. Or, and that's about 186,000 miles a second, so pretty fast. <laughs> and, and another really interesting thing about photons is that they can be a particle and they can be a wave depending on the situation. And so this is one of the things that uh, science is trying to reconcile because this is um, for something to just change by its nature from a wave to a particle just seems contrary to uh, uh, what you might call common sense. So anyway, uh, photons are very fast, but they're not instantaneous. So it takes time for light to get from one place to another. So for instance, to travel from the moon to the earth, it takes about 1.3 seconds and it takes about eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. So uh, light is not instantaneous, but it's fast. But if you knew, but for instance, in the scope of the universe or in the, uh, just in our galaxy alone, just to the nearest star, it would take light four years to reach the new, nearest star. So if you knew somebody on that star and you sent them a picture of yourself, that picture would look four years younger than you actually are. Just to give you some reference. <laughs> uh, and that's just a real brief uh, explanation of the photon. Go ahead, Anala. Thank you so much, Mark Thomas, for that definition of photon. So now think, think, think back. Now we are still talking about what happened in this experiment that the scientists did. So now ask this question, is it possible? Because we just heard the definition of how you know, the, the speed of light and how long it takes, but is it possible? Because these particles didn't take that long to affect each other. So is it possible that these particles are violating the laws of physics or are they demonstrating something else to us? And if so, what is that something else? And if all we have to do on our panel is to just unmute ourselves if we want to respond to that remark. Now, don't everybody just un unmute at the same time because I will call on somebody to, to start this coming. Okay, Pastor <laughs> Archie. Well, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I, you know, this this is, is very interesting uh, because holograms could be scary too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, but um, as far, I don't think it's violating anything uh, because, see, we, to to communicate, say for instance, just like we're doing now, who ever thought that we could zoom uh, to each other and and you see me, but you actually see me. Uh, as far as uh, I believe, the holograms would be just light that represents me or shows me. Uh, if I'm not wrong, now I think that 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 would just be. Uh, like Michael Jackson, for instance, uh, I, I heard someone say one time that they were going to 
bring some shows back and and Michael Jackson will actually be doing the show, but it would be a hologram. So um, I hope that that is the, the same thing. It, now, you know, it depends on how you look at things. People may say, oh, no, you messing with the dead and this and that. You no, know, but, you know, I don't think it, I think it could be uh, educational in, in one sense. Uh, depends on who you are and where you're from, I, I believe. All right. Thank you so much for that, Pastor Archie. Do you guys remember when we were children that we had these bookmarks that were uh, holograms and you could see, I think some of them had uh, had had uh, what people Jesus in it. Some people had a dolphin and it didn't matter how much you cut that little bookmark. You know, maybe you guys are not old enough to remember that. I, I do. Don't be shy. You know, like you don't remember this. I remember you could cut it up in all kinds of little pieces and you could still see the whole dolphin in that bookmark. Now, going back and thinking about what the scientists just did. Remember, the scientists, they moved these, they split this photon, which is light. What are we? Are we light? Are we? Yes, we're light, right? So even though we are separated from the whole, Kina, I am not you as an individual. I'm a Nala. I'm not Lavelle. I'm a Nala. But guess what? We came from what the whole, right? Remember, we talked about the fact that you could pull a cup of water out of the ocean, but it's still the ocean. You just separated, you just got a cup of water, still came from the whole. So it's what, that's what we're talking about when we talk about the power of connectivity. So now think about this. What if, what if the signal from one photon, photon never traveled to reach the other? Think about that. Is it possible that we live in a universe where the information between myself and you, Kina, between myself and you, Tremaine, is it possible that it's, it's, it's already there? So think about this. When you pray and meditate for your loved ones, even though when they're overseas or wherever they are, for, even for ourselves, they're never, it never needs, that information never needs to be transported somewhere. I remember my grandmother, on her knees, praying, begging, God, I'm begging, you know, please send my prayer over there. Please help my child over there. Please, you know, bring me this and give me that. Just suppose that whatever the energy is that we put out, which could be a prayer, a meditation, or whatever that is, suppose it doesn't need to travel anywhere. It's, it exists everywhere all the time. Pastor Archie, what do you say about that? I think Pastor Archie must have left for a second. Okay, um, Lavelle Rosser, Brother Rosser, what do you say about that? What do you say about perhaps the energy between myself and the energy between my sister, Kina, the energy between myself and the energy between Tremaine, or it's, it's no, there's no space between that. Our thoughts and all that, there's no space between those things. That is the power of human connectivity. Brother Rosser, Rosser. Yes. Good morning, SRC. Um, I say that that is a, it's a, it's a reality that more and more of us are becoming aware of. Yes, it's real. Um, the ancient um, masters uh, would refer to this as being the, what's known as the Akazic record. And at any given time, we are, each and every one of us are capable of accessing or tapping into this Akazic record. It's held uh, deeply within our uh, memory, especially within our pineal gland and our uh, pituitary gland that's housed in the, uh, in the uh, region of the head. So yeah, this, 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 this is very real. I, I'm really enjoying this because we're going a little deeper. So uh, the, the, this, 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 this reality is, is something that uh, will, with the photons, will become more and more uh, evident as we continue to uh, graduate here on planet Earth. Now, I might add there's one additional factor. What we are capable of doing 
with our own minds, with our own spirits and through our soul. We have counterparts that are trying to do the exact same thing, but they're trying to do it technologically. And they have what is called a CERN, C-E-R-N, you can look this up on the internet, Collider. And they are doing exactly what uh, Sister Anala has explained to Earth previously uh, with the photons. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that, um, Brother Ross, Rosser. So now, uh, Akina, what do you have to what do you have to add to that? Morning, everyone. Um, I I tell you what, unpacking um, that technology is there's so much there for us to learn and to be able to process and understand. But what I will say or what I feel um, is that everything we see in technology, everything we see in the movies, every, even computers, all this grand stuff that they come up with all the time. I heard somewhere someone say that everything is about us or everything is based on us, like humans, us as, as humanity. We are the most advanced technology that exists. So I believe when all these things come forth and all these uh, exciting new um, technologies are developed, we should take those opportunities to, to try to connect within ourselves. Okay, what is it in this piece of technology? What is it in this new device that is similar or is a copy of what I have within myself? Um, because we are indeed powerful beyond measure. So I think it's an opportunity for us to just become aware of how powerful we are. Because again, we are the most advanced and amazing technology that exists. So. Absolutely. 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 You know, <laughs> I'm glad you said that, uh, Kino, because, you know, I remember this, this person I know works for Honda. And what they said is that every time the technology, the, 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 the process that the humans use, on a particular job, on a particular, um, I guess, table or whatever work they're doing, what they do is they have a computer that will assimilate what the human is doing. And they, they may do it for a year, two years, whatever it is. But when that computer finally learns and understands the strokes that the humans are doing, guess what happens? The humans are moved away and a robot a robotic system takes over that particular function. So you're absolutely right about that. Is the 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 robotics that we are seeing in the in the industry now? They're only duplicating what they see us as humans do. So you're right. We have all of that expertise already in us. We have the power to heal. We have the power to move forward. We have the power to move mountains and all of those things. But what has happened to that. We have fallen asleep. And that's what SRC is about. It's about waking people up. Uh, Pastor Archie, I saw you unmute yourself. I think you wanted to, 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 to chime in on that. Yeah, you better give me for that thought good away. You know, I ain't as young as I used to be. But, the, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, look, that was an incident. And, and I, I'm sitting here trying to remember what the scripture was where an individual, uh, and, and I'm thinking that it was Paul, has seen some, um, I'm not sure. I won't say. But what happened, they seen someone get killed in another part of the, the state or, or country or whatever the case may be. And they weren't there at that time. It, it's just like you and I. Uh, you know, when when you were in camp, I could I and 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 I, I don't think people, some people, well, I say me myself. For, for a while, I didn't understand how, you know, I could be over in Italy and I could actually see my mother praying for me or I'm talking to an individual over in the United States somewhere. Uh, we have the ability, y'all, and, and, and like to say, those robots do mimic what we do as, as humans, but within us, when we reach that higher consciousness, we are able to reach each other from different parts of the state. And, and um, I would, would equate that to the spirit because, you know, they stopped talking about the spirit like they used to, and they talk more of the soul and the body, but you can't leave spirit out. The spirit is powerful. 
it is powerful. So we are able to, you know, I, I've seen Kena or, or, or Marco or whatever case, I've seen your face. Now, when you're no longer on this video, I still can see your face. Within my mind, I can still see you. I still can view you as I had seen you. So that ought to tell us some about the spirituality of, of, of us and our higher consciousness. When we really meditate on something, we can really perceive it and see it. That's right. That's exactly right. And we can change, we can, we can change people's mind. We can, I mean, when you you can, because what you just said, Pastor Archie, is even though you're not there, even though you're not there, you can still connect with a person. And so I, I want to, you know, keeping this in mind, keeping this in mind, can we surmise that we are connected all the time? Can we can we can we say that we're connected all the time? It doesn't matter. Even when we are alone and in a crowd, we're still connected. For yeah. example, a person watches the news and the news describes a black male who is murdered by police. What emotions might one feel? And how, think about this, how does those emotions, emotions affect everybody else that you're connected to. And when I say connectivity, human connectivity, I'm not just talking human connectivity based on your race. We got to understand that we are connected to everything, humans, nature, everything. I think we had a, a, a segment where we talked about, we've seen so many trees falling. Look around you, look at nature. If you go on hikes, take a look at nature. How many trees are just falling now? Because even nature is feeling the emotions that we are sending out. So when someone, even though they're alone and they're looking at the TV, you know, and they see something that happens and they have this emotion in their heart goes and it connects with their mind. And now it's been, what, what happens with that? Uh, someone want to, to um, Mark, Mark Thomas, what do, you, what do you say about that? Um, hmm, okay. Uh, you know, I was gonna, uh, and I'll kind of get back to the origin of our conversation where we were talking about uh, photon and light and how it can how it can be a wave or a particle, not to get too deep, but that's an amazing thing to me because and 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 if we can relate very small to us because you know we're composed of light, which is photons. and if they're all doing if they're all if they're all doing the same thing within us, then what is to say that we can't do? exactly what they do on a on a on a minuscule level so for instance if if a photon is a wave it's not a particle so it, a wave represents a lot of possibilities which is the same with us we live i mean i kind of visualize myself as being on a wave and the wave is composed of all these different possibilities that could happen to you or that you can make happen to you and that you have control over any, That's exactly any ideas right. on that. Yes, and so I, I I like that. So let's even even keeping what the question I ask, and even what you said, Mark Thomas, with that. So when you're looking at something, you are alone because I know somebody said that uh, well, you know when I when I go out and when I go when I I, I condition myself so that I, I'm you know that I'm you know I try to stay positive when I'm out there. But the question is, when you are alone. And you're watching these things on the media. When you are alone, and you think about that person who cut you off in traffic, because you now you're outside, and we want to put on a good impression. We put on our makeup and all this stuff. But when we are alone, we're still sending signals, guys. And that's the point that I want us to understand through SRC today is that it doesn't matter. We are still sending those signals and, and uh, Mark Thomas, you said that and talked about uh, the particles and the waves, those don't end just because we're sitting in the house by ourselves. They can get through the wall because it's light and light travels to each other. Light connects with each other. Uh, Kena, what do you say about that? How do you, you know, what do you, what do you want to add to that? Yeah, I was just uh, thinking about, I was reminding myself the other day um, you know, sometimes we have to remind ourselves who we are. We have to remind ourselves of, of our thoughts, 
um, because those thoughts can sometimes just run rampant and uh, we have to master those thoughts versus being a slave to them. And I was just thinking about a, a similar concept the other day, you know, be mindful of the, the vibration that you carry, you know, because as we allow those thoughts to continue on, it changes the vibration, it changes the frequency that we carry. Therefore, like you just said, you know, it impacts those light particles. And uh, it's just important for us to be mindful in, in those moments. Like you said, Anala, uh, we, we're so focused on being positive when, when we're out amongst us others. We're so focused on saying the right things and doing the right things when we're interacting with each other. But your mindset, your thought process, um, you, the energy that you carry, that you vibrate is important, whether you're alone or whether you're with others. And um, just thinking about this whole concept, um, I think it would be interesting if maybe we conduct some type of experiment, maybe, um, maybe at a certain time every day, we all agree to focus on a certain thought and maybe see what happens. I don't know, that thought came to me as well. I, I like, I, I love that because, oh, uh, what better way to prove what we're talking about other than to experiment with it? The same thing that the scientists did. I've, I've done it lots and lots and lots of times and I know it works. You cannot tell me it doesn't work, it does, but I would love for us as SRC to conduct that. So we need to, you know, on the next show, we're gonna come up with what we, what, what uh, and, and that means even if you're focusing, you have a loved one that's incarcerated, you have something that's going on in your life, we can all focus on that situation and get that person free. I believe that. I, there's no doubt in my mind. I believe that we can focus our energy towards whatever something that we want to focus it towards, and it can happen. Uh, now, reflecting back again on the on the hologram, I want us to rem I want to I want us to be reminded that that hologram, even though it's all cut up, right? split into many parts, it still reflects the whole. Now, this is what we're talking about here. This is very important. We are individuals, but we reflect a whole. And I know some people want to think that they're just separate. It ain't nothing like me, you know, I'm this, I'm that. But at the end of the day, guys, we are, we are parts of the whole. And that's why whatever I do is going to affects something somewhere. You might not even see what it affects. You may not even see that, but it does. That's why it's important, as you said, Kina, to make sure, regardless of where we are, to make sure our mind, our thoughts are in the right place. Just because you're driving in your car or and no one knows that you're cussing out the driver that just <laughs> hit brakes in front of you, <laughs> doesn't mean that that energy isn't going forward somewhere. Um, energy doesn't stay local, guys. Have you ever had a good idea, thought about a good idea, but you just kept thinking and I'm going to pray on it and all this stuff, right? And then next thing you know, someone else is doing that good thing that you thought about doing because that ideal is energy and it travels, it goes somewhere. There is nothing that is local. It's always happening all the time. Pastor Archie, I see that you have a thought. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I have to relate things to the church setting. And I've preached, uh, I can remember quite a few times, picking up people's vibes in the, in the church setting. Now, it could easily be said that someone in here, you know, has a headache out of the 10, 20, 30 people. Maybe somebody just might have a headache, but I'm not. Uh, looking at that perspective of it, but I'm looking at, at it as you know, when someone who's in the audience, uh, when I go, when I, when I have a church meeting or I'm preaching or praying, I open myself up in, 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 in a meditative state so that I can receive what people, uh, uh, their wants and their needs. And there have been times when I have actually called out people their exact occupation that the, the exact problem that they're having and it was the i mean the person actually said this is me uh and and this is what i'm doing i did not not to, to go too deep but 
Yeah, that that vibration, you know, you know, you can look at me uh even now and 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 see uh my facial expression sometime and that may give me away, but I'm to go a little deeper, like you were saying, I could reach uh people, people could reach you from a ways off. So there is something there that that allows that to happen. And and uh I'm sure the scientists are on to it, but you know, I believe that it's 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 the spirit myself. I know you see what photons do and all that, but uh, back in the day, you know, they hadn't discovered all that yet. But you know, we we have the ability. You know, it's there, it's there, so we can 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 reach. It was put there so that we could reach it to each other, and and uh, I can agree with you, or you know, it's okay to disagree, but not be disagreeable all the time. But you know. We 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 were made that way. We are wonderfully made. I put it that put it that way. Absolutely, we are. Thank you so much for that. And I want to go back to that church in a second, but before we do that, I want to because I I want to remind our audience, uh, 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 Tremaine, uh, and and I see that Victor's hand is up. So I want um, to if you guys have anything you want to say, you want to ask a question, you want to make a comment, please unmute yourself. We'll call on you or raise your hand and we'll call on you so you can make that comment. But I see that Victor all the way from Nigeria has his hand up. So Victor, what would you like to say? Um, yeah, um, good afternoon from you, everybody. Hi, yes. welcome. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so what um, I wanna say is, um, I wanna speak about the uh, uh, picking up vibes about something, you know, I my pastor used to say something to me somewhere back then, he said, um, whenever, wherever we are, or whatever we are thinking, that we should not think of something negative. You know, maybe for an instance, or uh, maybe uh, you just um, you are in, in, in a in, in a car or in a bus, so you are now you are thinking about okay, maybe uh, this car should have an accident and stuff like that. And he um, said that that person is already bewitched that everything we do or everything we are thinking about it should be of a, a positive or of positive we should we should be positive you know so now um uh, uh, giving uh, some um, someone or maybe you know thinking about someone like you say um the light can reach everywhere that we should do or we should always think about something positive maybe we are meditating or we are praying for someone you know like you said earlier we should I always do what we should always do that with the positive mindset that everything we, we, we think or everything we, 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 we pray for, we surely do or we surely uh, we, we surely come to pass. So that, that that's what I, I just want to have that, you know, that everything we are doing, we should always be of positive mindset, you know, so, you know, the vibes is, is very, very real and it's very, very true. So um, I'm, I, I love what, what you're saying, saying so and I'm enjoying everything. So um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Victor. Oh, thank you so much for that. So what Victor just said is his pastor said, hey, always think positive. And thinking positive is not just when you are with other people, right? It's also when you alone, those, those positive thoughts has to, you, it, it has to be something it's just like breathing is what it should be. It should be just like breathing. So Tremaine, Evans, how you doing? What would you like to add today? <laughs> I mean, there's not much I could add. I mean, you guys basically said a mouthful. You said it all. I mean, I do believe in the, the fact of thought transmutation and energy as well. Not, I mean, and like I said, you guys said it all pretty much, you know, positive thinking and, and manifesting everything into existence, you know. So That's I right. mean. Mm. But thank you. Thank you for being willing to uh to uh to share, you know, that that that, that you enjoy what we said. Now, Mark Thomas, I see that your hand is up. What would you like to add to that conversation? I just want to get back to what Archie was saying about um uh, uh how you can sense what's going on with uh, not only people, but your entire you know, world around you, you can actually sense that. And, uh, uh, and that's the connectivity. And, uh, and if, you, 
you pair that with what Victor said about being positive and everything, it, it just reinforces itself. And these things propagate, you know, through our, through our world, through our universe. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and I wanted to get back to uh, Pastor Archie, what he brought up too, because he brought up the church. And you think about this. I, I mean, I, I went to a lot of churches and to I, I, to I and, and, and joined a lot of churches. I mean, I felt so sad for the preacher when they were trying to get people to join that I joined a lot of them because I just, you know, because I think I wanted to just go home and they wouldn't let you go to somebody came up and joined. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. But uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, church is one of the places where I've seen really energy that was just circling around and around and around and around in that place. Because you had Mother, mother uh, Jones or Mother whoever or Brother whomever, if they came in, they were in a mood or whatever, the whole church was affected by that. Or you had some bad, uh, uh, has some, I shouldn't say bad, but you have an usher at the door who by the time you came in, the energy was already all over you because they were, you know, not that you know, great at ushering. And so, so church to me, and, 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 and Pastor Archer, you talked about spirit. Well, we, if you we remember and go back to the definition of spirit, we, rem we remember that spirit is what? It's light. It's, 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 you know, you can't touch it. So when you're talking about spirit, it's not some spirit way up in the sky somewhere. It's the, it's the light within us is what that spirit is. And so I do remember that, uh, um, that, that in that setting, we had all kinds of stuff, stuff going on and you were susceptible to picking up that energy and, 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 and taking it back home with you. So people thought that they were coming to church. Not all of them. You can't just everybody, you know, it's not, you know, it's not. But some, there was some, some, it didn't matter though that you were going in there with trying to have a good energy because it was energy in there all around and you will be a part of that energy if anybody would brought in some different type of energy in that setting. So that's, that's what I, I wanted to, to say about that. But you're right, uh, Pastor Archie, it's the, you know, in church, you can pick up, that's why people, uh, people thought that a church is a place that you can just be healed. But guess what? If something is going on with someone, I can, can send healing to them. I don't need to be in that setting, but what was happening, because everybody was in that setting and everybody was focusing on the same thing, then you got results. Just imagine this. Just imagine, think about a, uh, a magnifying glass. And you know, I know little, little people did this when we were children. I, I, I didn't do it because I was afraid of ants, but... Remember, people used to take the magnifying glass, especially you guys, you know, you did it, took a magnifying glass and put it on a little ant and saw the ant just kind of burn up. Hopefully you didn't do it, but some people may have, but, and I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm, what I'm saying is when we focus on a particular thing, and that's what some of the things that you said, Kenan, that we need to try that experience, that experiment. Somebody brings something to the table that they want to happen. And we're going to all focus on it. And we don't even have to have a certain time. We just do it. Because positive, when you're positive, Victor, like the pastor told you, positivity, you can't, you shouldn't set a time, okay, one o'clock and one o'clock every day, I'm going to be positive. Then it's something you have to put on like you put your clothes on. You have to walk and talk it all the time. And so let me say this. I know we don't live in a vacuum. And of course, we see things in the world that, do not create within us a good feeling. We know that. We, we, that. That's just the way it is. The question is, this is the question. How is the feeling or emotion managed? Do we allow that the emotional seeds of lack and sickness and strength detest to take root in our hearts and minds and like roots of a tree spread out throughout the universe? So how do we manage that? We don't live in a vacuum. We're going to see things that we wish we could not see. How do we manage that? Pastor Archie. Anala, I, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, you, you said something uh, uh, a few minutes ago uh, concerning the fact that when we think of things, a lot of times we don't do anything with them, but someone else that's sitting around, they pick it up and all of a sudden you, you see it just like an invention. Uh, some scientists and I would say the world, I could use that term, uh, they are watching what we are doing. Uh, 
and everyone is not on the same page as far as being positive and and helping us in the sense that that we're speaking on but they are watching and just like with subliminal messages they've already come to understand that the power of suggestion is very strong and 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 they are taking these things and using them uh to advance themselves or their businesses and and we're not even aware we're talking about it now how it affects each other but there are people who already use these things in big businesses you know and i think we spoke of that before how you know big corporations uh, get people that can can see in the future or you know what i'm saying they are using these things now and and they've been using them way back in the 60s i'm sure you know in the movie theaters when they were suggest to you that it's time to eat some popcorn but you didn't know it or, or drink a soda but their main goal was to sell those condiments uh when you know uh, after they figure you didn't watch the movie for a while why can't they are doing the same thing now not just through if they could do it through the movie screen they could do it through through the television through the computers suggest to us things that they want a certain group of people to do if i hope i'm on the right page there and and we don't come to, um, we don't realize why certain things is happening in a certain area because they're getting certain subliminal messages and we don't even know about it we're not even aware of it absolutely pastor Archie. and that's one of the reasons we're talking here all the time about is we we must know ourselves i think uh um brother lavelle rosser talked about the fact that you know that there was a particular company that were, would do this type of thing they would actually uh, do these, provide these numerology reports of who people are. Uh, so they knew more about whoever they were hiring. And so they, they probably wouldn't even hire you if you didn't match up to uh, their information. Am I, am I, and we're going to step back to that question I asked uh, in a second, but Lavelle, you want to, you want to shed some light on what Pastor Archer just said about how these corporations are, are engaging in uh, getting us to buy, do, be, Wow, it's on a magnitude that I think would boggle the minds of so many people. Uh, right here in Atlanta, and there's so many places I want to start, but I'm gonna start here. Uh, there's a program, uh, when I first became aware of it, it was right during the time that the Olympics came to Atlanta back in 1996. There's a program called Remote Viewing. and uh, Pastor Archie touched on this. In this remote uh, viewing program, they pay upwards to $100,000 to teach uh, individuals who are head of corporations, heads of government, in order to see into the future. This is a joint effort with the CDC, Center of Disease Control, and Emory University, and uh, military op uh, different military operations throughout the metropolitan uh, Atlanta region, including uh, Dobbins Air Force, I may say. So yes, you have a joint effort with the military, with corporations, with educational, higher educational institutes, they're all joined in doing this. And I have to say that this is not always done in the manner in which it's going to support humanity, but it's done in a manner by which is used to control humanity and large groups of people and to cause a shift in consciousness in the manner by which they like to maintain their control. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, uh, Brother Arasa. Now, just think about what Pastor Archie said. Think about what Brother Rosser just talked about. So now, when we think about a system that exists like that, giving us all of these suggestions, and we take a look at the media. If you think, you take a look at the look at. I just want to use this for example. Uh, police shootings, and I'm not saying that those things are not real. Don't get me wrong about that. But what I am saying is this: when we pay attention to the energy that is put in front of our face, what happens with that? When we are focusing on that energy. What is going to happen with that? We, if I see somebody, 
it's like it's like a, a person growing up in a in a in a home where there is domestic violence. What is going to happen to those children when they see that type of thing? It's most likely going to move on from the next generation to the next generation. So when you think about where some people are, there has been a light. And, and Pastor Archie and, 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 and Brother LaRosa La Ross has talked about this. There has been a light that's been shined on this thing they want you to look at. So sometimes we think that news is given to us so that we can be informed, so that we can not go in that direction because they, they want to inform us. But what if they're giving you this information because they know this? What if they're giving you this information so that you can focus on it, so you can continue to create what you see? So think about, I remember a long time ago, even they had um, pictures on television about Africa, how poor it was, how everybody was, you know, running around in you know, little diapers and, you know, all that stuff, just bad. But we know now that we got the internet, we know it's not like that, is it, Victor? We know that people in, in our motherland are just as educated as everybody else. But look at the picture that was shown. Think about even the commercials that were given us about, and not commercials, but the media at one time saying that every time you saw somebody that was robbing somebody or doing something bad, who did they look like? So what I'm saying is, what if the system is giving you the picture they want you to see? And so I go back to my original question again. I know we don't live in a vacuum, but do we allow the emotional seeds of lack, sickness and all those things to take root in our hearts and minds and like the roots of a tree spread throughout the universe? What do we do with those emotions, guys? What do we do when we see that? Somebody, somebody anybody want to answer that? Uh, Akina, do you want to you want to you want to jump on that one? What do we do when we see that emotion? What do we do when we see that? Thing on the television what is it me personally i i choose to take that um if i do happen to see something on the news or see th something negative or something that causes me to feel in a way i take that energy and i transmute it and i transform it because again like you said anala it's, it's a program they want to put those energies those stories in front of us so that we all focus on it on those so that we and we magnify them and and it causes it to to grow you know whatever you focus on whatever you give your attention to it grows not only in individually but as a collective so it is important that's that's something i preach all the time turn the news off turn it off like my mom certain people you know they're they they've grown addicted to it they're addicted to bad news That's it's right. just like uh and and it's something that we all need to, to become conscious of and and make some changes that's right and, and making those changes uh anybody else want to want to respond to that about making the changes fast Archie. Yeah, see, it, it's because in a sense, uh, uh Ken, I, I, I I agree with, she, with what she's saying. You got to understand that in, in a sense, we are advertising for something that 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 is bad. We're advertising. You might not even believe, like me, I myself, uh, I was on that vaccine like white on rice one time. I mean, I I, I was looking, I was reading everything that said vaccines are bad. Vaccines are just vac then, then, you know, but I was not as great as the news media. Well, they got it going on because see, once they start to showing you uh, pictures of little, little kids and you're neglecting your child if you don't get vaccinated and so forth and so on, these things, they take toll on, on families and, 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 and make you start to feel, they're getting to your feelings, just like a, a, a good preacher. If he don't touch your feelings, if he don't get you feeling sensual in that church, he may not get your money that day. I'm not just, you know, all of them ain't like that, you know, but I'm just saying, if you understand what I'm saying, we, they are reach, they get us to transfer that feeling to another family member that may have not been watching TV. You know what I'm saying? It's like it came from generations and generations about church and who God is, that it was transferred from one 
grandmother, granddaddy, sister, brother, whatever. We are a way of 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 advertisement, I would say, to other people that don't I, really even get to see it. But we I give love them. that. I love that, Pastor Archie. That's the truth. Now, Victor has his hand up. Victor, what do you have to say? Um. Yeah. To to your question, your your question. So my answer is that. Um, whatever we see on the internet or maybe on the news, uh, I personally, I do two things. Uh, the first thing I do is take it to my advantage. And the second thing is I just ignore it. If I see that those are, uh, you know, maybe an uh, advertisement, a news or stuff like that, maybe they, uh, I, can't do, I can't do anything with it. So I just do what I just ignore it. Maybe switch off the, th uh, the TV as, you know, as you've talked about earlier, or maybe I just, you know, just stand up and go to my room and stuff like that. Or maybe I can just do what, I can just take it to my advantage. You know, mm -hmm. uh, most things in um, today, in this modern technology, you know, stuff like that, uh, maybe every, most of these things are fake. Let me just say that, you know, uh, watching a movie, I do watch movie very well. Uh, you know, watching a movie, everything is just CGI. If you see someone jumping from a rooftop and stuff like that, everything is, you know, uh, not real. And so what <laughs> I do personally, yeah, yeah. So that is it. Everything, even if they make an advertisement about um, a product, maybe um, uh, any, any, any product, you know, they can be like, okay, this, um, this thing is not there. You know, maybe they know that thing we harm, you know, um, whoever eats that, that product, they, they would just be like, oh, this thing is not there. This thing is not there. And if we find out that thing is, uh, is among the ingredients they used to make that product. So That's everything, cool. yeah, everything uh, today is, uh, let me just say uh, 80%, even 90% are fake. So uh, what I do personally with those, uh, with, with that is that I, I, I either take it to my advantage or I just ignore it. You know, taking it to my advantage, you know, I uh, I work well as, a, as a freelancer. If I see, okay, this news can, you know, I can make something out of it, then definitely I will just do what I will just, I will just uh, uh, make it work. But if I know this thing, we just, you know, it's just useless, then definitely I just do it. Just go to my room. So that's what I do to my own point of view. Thank you very All much. All right. Now, I want to go back, though. I want to step back on something that um, Pastor Archie said. And also what you said, Victor, Pastor Archie said that we are advertisers <laughs> for the news media. And we are, because when you hold that thought in your mind, you are advertising it for whoever put it out there. You are advertising it. So what do you do? Because as I mentioned, we don't live in a vacuum. You're going to watch things. And once you watch it, you can't unwatch it. Your mind seen it. So what do you do with that? You must decide for yourself. You have, and immediately, if you happen to let that come into your consciousness, you must immediately replace it with something else. Replace it with another thought, place it with something else good or whatever else you want to see. But you must, because you can't, you shouldn't try to fight it. Because the more you try to fight, it's, oh, no, I, I, I don't want to see that. I ain't going to believe that. Guess what? You're still focusing on it. So what you do is you replace it with something else. You replace it with another thought thought, another vision or something. And that is important that we must do that. Even when we start to move into this experiment that Kenan talked about, and I can't wait to do that, but you must choose another experience. Like when I was in camp, I had to choose another experience. I didn't want to continue to experience in what I was experiencing. So what did I do? I chose something else. Didn't try to fight it because guess what? The dark has a right to exist, just like the light. Hate has a right to exist, just like love. Poverty has a right to exist, but we can choose something different. Now, what I wanna do right now is we're gonna go through a round robin because we're gonna leave because we're almost out of time. So I wanna go through a round robin and I want us to just take a few minutes, a few seconds, to share with our audience that lasting thought on this subject that we talked about today. And we're still talking about the power of human connectivity. We talked about how we might be split up, but we still won. So what's your final thoughts on that particular subject 
Uh, Kena, we're going to start with you and then we're going to go around. I would just like to encourage everyone, if, if there's something that you struggle with, like if you struggle with feeling uh, with a, a lack of confidence or you struggle with any area in your life, uh, take the time to just write a few sentences to counter that thought. Um, if you struggle with uh, feeling insecure, um, just a few sentences, I am confident. I um, have all the answers. Uh, I am somebody. Just what, whatever lack you feel in any area of your life, write a few sentences down. Keep it maybe on an index card nearby. And whenever you have those negative thoughts, pull that card out, recite those three lines, and start to counter those negative thoughts and build the positive so that you'll, you'll eventually conquer those negative thoughts. Thank you so much for that. That's, a, that's an excellent idea. I do that all the time. I have them all on my computer. You guys can't see them, but I have little notes on, on there. Uh, Brother Lavelle Rosser. Uh, I'd like to leave our audience, since, since we were talking about uh, uh, this holographic uh, world that we live in and, and, the, and the photons and acceleration of particles, I, I'd like to keep in mind that, you know, remember that we are very, 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 very powerful beings. And that what we are projecting is uh, what our reality can become. So if you want some very positive, uh, some very positive vibrations, some very positive uh, life experiences to happen, learn to uh, project your thoughts uh, in a most positive situation. If you go into a situation that's not too positive, make sure that you stay positive. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Brother Rasa. Um, Mark Thomas, what are your what do you want to leave with our audience today? Oh, really good show. Um, wow, right from right from photons to uh, uh, to uh, how we communicate with each other and and the way we're affected socially uh, by the media, et cetera, et cetera. I would say. Uh, you know, when you're when you're going through when you're experiencing something that you should always try to consider the source and uh, think about uh, what their motivation is or or what or whatever. What's the motivation behind uh, things? So, I mean, if you start there instead of just instead of just taking what's given to you, if you if you question and you think about the motivation, then I think, uh, uh, you know, you'll come to a much better answer for the questions in your life. All right, thank you for that, uh, Mark Thomas. Pastor Archie, what do you what do you want to leave? Well, I would like to leave. I, I like what everybody is saying. You know, I'm I'm gonna stick to what uh, Kena is, has told us to do. But one thing I would leave is that look at the truth. And how do you look at the truth? How do I look at the truth? I look in the mirror. If my attitude is worse than what I see in that mirror, then I know to adjust that thing. So look in the mirror every now and then and see what your, your facial expressions are and then think about how you're acting. And that helps me. I love that, Pastor Archie. Now, before uh, we I turn it back over to Mark Thomas to end our session, I want to give our audience an opportunity Victor, all the way from Nigeria, you have anything you want to leave our audience with? Leave our leave our audience with today because you were very active today. So, what would you like to leave them with? Anything? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what um, I, I will I will leave us with is that whatever we we are trying to achieve, you know, like um, you you do. You said um, you uh, whatever you want to achieve that okay. So you put it on a piece of paper. And you just you know put it somewhere uh, in your room that you can be you can see it very easily. So doing that every day, you know, you you will easily achieve that thing. You know, maybe you are trying to okay, trying to learn some things, and maybe sometimes you know people tend to forget some things. Maybe it is very important, but um, as time goes on, you forget. But as maybe if you try to put it on a piece of paper and place it uh, in your room where you can see it very well, maybe every day uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and before you go to bed and stuff like that. So definitely you will be able to, uh, to achieve that. And another thing is that we should always have a positive mindset. So that's what uh, 
I just want to hug. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victor. Um, Tremaine Evans, what do you want to leave our audience with today? Um, honestly, it was a very enlightening experience. And um, I got a lot of reassurance and confirmation from things that, you know, have already come to my knowledge or whatnot. And you now I was a pupil for the day, so I, I didn't really get to participate much like I wanted to. But um, it was, I, I, I don't know, I, I should do this more often, you know. Like I said, it was very enlightening. And, and I take everything and strive, you know. And right. um, I really appreciate you for inviting me. Well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad that you were here. And I'm glad that all of you guys were here. Um, I want to say that next week, this is going to be, it's going to be a really good, good, good broadcast because we're going to talk about, we're still talking about the power of human connectivity. So next week, we're going to be talking about those people that you meet, who, you know, you think you're just by chance meeting, but why? We're going to, we're going to talk about that. We're going to think about, we're going to look into, we're going to dig deep down into why is it that I met Kina? Why is it that I met Victor and all those things? Because everybody that you meet, bring something or allow is a lesson that's coming up within your consciousness. So we're going to talk about that next week, but I don't want to, Is anybody else need to say anything, uh, Denise, Kateria, anybody else have anything they want to say before I pass it over to Mark Thomas and we close out for today. Yeah, I'll go ahead and say this was a great conversation. And um, once you are aligned with the universe, um, you, you know, things are revealed people are revealed and um it doesn't get any better than that thank you for um thank you for the great conversation this morning y'all thank you thank you for for being here all right with that being said we have anything else if not i'm gonna pass it over to mark thomas who is going to take us out okay thank you nala uh yeah great show way to go everybody really loved it anyway to sign off all of us here with SRC want to thank the audience for attending today's presentation. We uh, really appreciate your patronage and encourage you to email us your questions or comments at shiftingreligiousconcepts at gmail.com. And don't forget that this presentation will be available on YouTube very soon. Even if you attended today's program, please go to Shifting Religious Concepts channel on YouTube and give us a thumbs up. This is one of the ways we get public attention, uh, attention and it really helps us promote the SRC mission. So if you're not subscribed, go to our newsletter uh, at shiftingreligiousconcepts.com forward slash registration and join us. So the next presentation is going to be next Sunday, same time, February 20th at 10 o'clock Eastern. So please join us for further conversations on human connectivity. And until then, we wish you all peace, health, wisdom, and love, of course. <laughs>